Andy Rodriguez has been optioned to AAA. Mitch Keller has been announced as the opening day starter for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And some trends that I want to see fixed before March 30th on opening day. All of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Pirates. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to that Pittsburgh Pirates podcast, everybody. My name is Ethan Smith, your host of the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. Hope you guys are all having a phenomenal Wednesday, March 15th. I am as well. Uh, We obviously just wrapped up watching the Toronto Blue Jays and the Pittsburgh Pirates today in another spring training game. Pirates lose 7-1 to in Dundon uh, against the Toronto Blue Jays, but there was a lot of news. Uh, In the news cycle for the Pittsburgh Pirates over the past couple of days, the biggest arguably being Andy Rodriguez being announced that he was optioned in a slew of roster moves and roster cuts to the minor leagues. Obviously, AAA, as you'll see in the title, he'll be in uh, AAA as the starting catcher, I have no doubt in my mind. Now, this news, to me, comes as no shock. Uh, I know that there's some discourse about employing Austin Hedges as your catcher to start the season with likely Tyler Heineman or another, you know, not so great catcher backing him up to begin the year. But to put it bluntly, the Pirates do this every year. You see teams do this all the time. You see the Pirates do it. You see the Reds do it. You see the in, or the Guardians do it. You see the Athletics do it. You see all these small teams use Super 2 to their advantage and use minor league options to their advantage. And that is precisely what the Pirates are doing once again with a guy like Andy Rodriguez, who no doubt in my mind has the rapport to be a phenomenal MLB player right out of the gate. But we saw the same thing last year with O'Neal Cruz. We saw the same thing the year before with Key Brian Hayes. Um, during the uh, COVID truncated season in 2020. He then comes up in 2021 as a full-timer, but he had already surpassed Super 2 because of the 2020 season. So this is not new to the Pittsburgh Pirates at all. Now for Endy, obviously back-to-back minor league MVPs. He was on MLB.com's all minor league first team last year. He has the bat to play. He's a very versatile and athletic kid. He's going to be a very good player. We just have to wait a couple months to see him play. Now, I understand the infuriation because Austin Hedges obviously is not going to give you much of an offensive output, if any offensive output, out of that catcher position, and whoever backs him up will likely not do so either. So you're basically making the decision to put a guy like Andy Rodriguez in the minors, who is clearly better than both. I would say Hedges probably is a little bit better defensively as of this current moment. But as an overall player and what he would bring to the table, Andy Rodriguez is better than Austin Hedges as we currently speak. But there's lots of layers to this now. Because Austin Hedges, as I've said on this podcast before, I understand that he's not going to give you really any offensive output whatsoever. Although that's the case, that is going to be more made up in the idea that he is going to really, really, really help this pitching staff take the next steps. And by the pitching staff, I'm talking about Mitch Keller. I'm talking about Rowanzi Contreras. I'm talking about Johan Oviedo, Luis Ortiz, Dowry Moretta, Harleen Garcia when he comes back from his injury, Jose Hernandez, David Bednar. The guys that are going to be in this rotation and in this bullpen for years to come are going to learn some good things from Austin Hedges. He's one of the best framers in all of baseball. He's one of the best defensive catchers in all of baseball. He knows how to get guys out at second base, which is going to be very valuable for the Pirates because they need to keep runs off the board this year. There's a lot of positives to Austin Hedges being the starting catcher of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The major negative is you're just not getting the offensive output. Now, for Andy Rodriguez, what does the timetable look like? Well, I don't know if we've gotten an update on the dates 
for Super 2 and getting that extra year of service time. They are two different dates. Let's keep that in mind. One is for money. One is for that extra year of service time. So that's really where this whole service time manipulation tactic that the Pirates absolutely love to use comes into play. Once those dates are learned out, that timetable for Indy will become more clear. Now, obviously, we saw it with O'Neill Cruz last year. It took a couple of months for him to get up here. You saw the useless excuses that the team made that he needed to work on certain things and other things weren't working out for him yet. And, you know, stuff to basically save face and say this is why he's in AAA because he's working on things to become a better baseball player. O'Neill Cruz comes up, does phenomenal, has issues with strikeouts and walks, but outside of that, breaking stack cast records, doing great things at the shortstop position defensively after he was learning that he didn't have to fire the ball 110 miles per hour over there every single time that he threw it, and the rest is history. O'Neill Cruz heads into 2023 as a potential breakout candidate in all of Major League Baseball, not in just the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Endy is probably going to be the same case. He's going to go to AAA Indianapolis. He's going to help the pitchers there as well. They're going to be there. That I also think you're going to see a slew of moves where Endy Rodriguez is a part of something where he comes up and then maybe like a Luis Ortiz or a Johan Oviedo follow if they're not in the rotation to begin the year because they've been working with him all season. So you can keep that chemistry going between a pitcher and catcher, which is going to be very huge when they're getting inserted into the major league roster in the middle of the season. I would say late May, early June, and July is the, the big months that you want to look for in terms of when Andy Rodriguez is going to make his debut. Now, when his debut eventually comes, I don't think that means the end for a guy like Austin Hedges. I think he'll back up Andy Rodriguez. You could even see a catcher platoon to kind of ease Andy into the workings of an MLB season. There's a lot of different things that go on there. But then you move on to the layers of this. Austin Hedges is going to start as your major league catcher. Andy Rodriguez is going to be your triple-A catcher. So where does that put Henry Davis? Well, Henry Davis, obviously, number one overall pick a few years ago, is going to probably start in double-A Altoona because it wouldn't make much sense to have Henry Davis and Andy split time in triple-A when you want to get the most at-bats and the most experience for both of them at the individual minor league level. So you're going to probably see Henry Davis start in double-A, which likely means you're probably not going to see Henry Davis at all in 2023 on this team. I think the best opportunity that you get with that is September call-ups and the final weeks of the season. That's about it. I don't think you're going to see a lot of Henry Davis this year for the Pittsburgh Pirates like some people were theorizing that we might get both Andy Rodriguez and Henry Davis. I'm not ruling it out. Weirder things have happened, but I think with this decision to start Andy in AAA, which we all knew was coming, this should not come as a surprise to you whatsoever, that Henry Davis is likely a 2024 guy now. And I have no big issues with that. I think Henry has a lot of things to work on. I think he needs to stay healthy. He needs to stay healthy through an entire year. He needs to improve defensively, which he's very good defensively already, but I feel like he has some things he can improve on. And he hasn't exactly lit up the minors yet since he began here in Pittsburgh. There's not a lot that Henry has really done that has just flashed off the page. Right now he's a number one overall pick that the Pirates are easing into the uh, into the process, and Andy Rodriguez just made it a hundred times easier because now he can work in the minors with absolutely no pressure. He doesn't have to worry about coming up here and being the catcher right away. He doesn't have to worry about those things. And honestly, with Andy Rodriguez, he doesn't really have to worry about those things either because Austin Hedges is going to cement himself as the catcher for this team, albeit again that the offense won't be there. Defensively, he is going to make it up. That is what I could say about Austin Hedges, is a defensive-minded catcher. His defense is going to make up for his lack of offense. So when Andy comes up, he's going to learn from Austin Hedges. There's things he's going to learn from him. So I saw a lot of people panicking, and I understand. I'll give this sentiment to you, too. I want the best players in the system on the roster to be on the MLB roster. Most people want that. But baseball is a game that, especially for the Pirates, is a very financial game to play. 
And you have to be careful with those finances because you look at the Pirates players that they're going to be in extension talks with after Brian Reynolds. You're talking about Mitch Keller. You're talking about Rowanzi, O'Neill Cruz, eventually Rodolfo Castro, possibly, Leover Piguero, Nick Gonzalez. You're also talking about a guy like Jack Sawinski. Um, they already have Hayes locked up. There's a lot of money that's going to be getting involved with this Pirates team over the next couple of years. Is it really all that important way down the line for any Rodriguez? No. But this is just how the Pittsburgh Pirates operate. This is how Ben Charrington operates. And this is how they're going to continue to operate because they have no reason not to because baseball does not stop them from doing it. So I understand that everybody might be upset about it. I get it. I'm a little upset about it, too, but it's also not something that comes as a shock to me that Andy Rodriguez will be starting in Indianapolis to begin 2023 and will likely be there for a couple months, and Henry Davis likely not seeing him this year, and I'm completely okay with that. Before we talk about Mitch Keller being announced as the opening day starter for the Pittsburgh Pirates, I want to let you guys know about the wonderful people over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Of course, you can make every moment more at FanDuel.com slash locked on. March Madness is here. The Pitt Panthers won their first March Madness game since 2014 last night. So if you want to bet on the Panthers to beat Iowa State on Thursday, you should do it at FanDuel Sportsbook. And also, the NBA season is on its way to the playoffs pretty soon, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, FanDuel has a lot of of bets ranging from anything from the money line to point score to the spread, totals, rebounds, player points, and props, and more exclusive bets all at FanDuel Sportsbook. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, so don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA and the Locked On Podcast Network. And before we get into Mitch Keller and starting on opening day, we will be right back after this short break. All righty, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. Once again, I am your host, Ethan Smith, host of the Locked On Pirates podcast, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every day. And make sure you uh, follow, like, subscribe on YouTube. Leave a good review on Apple Podcasts. Listen on Spotify, Odyssey, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts because the regular season is right around the corner and Pirates baseball is going to be very, 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 very fun to cover this year. And I'm very excited to enter year three of me going into the season and covering the team for the entire year. And the year will start with Mitch Keller on the hill against the Cincinnati Reds on opening day. It will be Mitch Keller's first opening day start of his career. And when you look at the career arc of a guy like Mitch Keller, it, it, it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows to uh, be in the St. Patrick's Day spirit with the leprechauns and all that good stuff. But... Mitch Keller getting this nod, obviously we all saw the emotional video with Derek Shelton asking him about Kevin Ploiecki and what they were doing and how many sessions he threw today and how many he was going to throw on March 30th. I just absolutely love that moment between Derek Shelton and Mitch Keller. But you look at a guy like Mitch Keller who starts his career as a top 10 prospect. He was highly touted in all of baseball. He was highly touted in the Pirates system. He comes up. He struggles mightily. He's considered a bust. People want him out of Pittsburgh. He gets sent down to Indianapolis a couple of times. He struggles again. He can't seem to figure it out. Then last year comes around, and it finally felt like Mitch Keller got a sense of figuring it out as a Pittsburgh Pirate. And he had a phenomenal year last year in terms of what we've seen from him in past years, I mean, the ERA numbers went down, the home run numbers went down, the walks went down, everything went down 
for Mitch Keller last year that needed to go down. The things that went up, the strikeouts, other things like that. So far in spring training, 13 strikeouts over 11 innings. He has it going for him. You don't look at records anymore when you look at these starting pitchers, but 31 games last year, a 3-9-1 ERA with 159 innings pitched and a 138 strikeout total with a 1.4 whip. I mean, the guy's a career 5 ERA guy. It was very nice to see Mitch Keller finally get to this point. And I feel like we've seen Mitch Keller so much now where, I mean, he's started 70 games now in his major league career where we've just gotten accustomed to seeing Mitch Keller on this team, and he's been here for quite some time. Shockingly enough, Mitch Keller is still only 26 years old. He still has so much time to grow in this league. He still has so much time to improve in this league. And last year, I think, were the steps that he needed to take to make those improvements and ultimately be a better pitcher at the major league level. And I think he succeeded in that, in that area so far. He now has a running mate in Orlando Contreras, which is something he hasn't had since Jamison Tallion. So this opening day nod is a big deal. I mean, it really is, because now it kind of sets up a roadmap of what you're going to expect from the Pittsburgh Pirates in terms of what the rotation is going to look like. It appears that Mitch Keller will be the number one option, followed by, I would assume, Rowanji Contreras, and then I would say you're probably dipping into the Rich Hill or JT Brubaker bag. It depends on what uh, order they want to use them. And then that fifth spot, I mean, is it still Vince Velasquez? Is it Johan Oviedo? Is it Luis Ortiz? Is it somebody else that we're not really talking about that much, like a Caleb Smith? Is it a guy like that? So Keller being announced for opening day as the starter really opens up how this starting pitching staff is going to look for most of this year. And I enjoy that Mitch Keller was finally able to get this moment because, as I mentioned, his career arc has not been pretty. His ERA numbers, not pretty. His whip numbers, not that pretty. I mean, you look at the season he had last year, 31 games, he's had 70. So he almost hit it in half. 159 innings to 329 and one-thirds innings in his career. 138 strikeouts and 311 on his career. Mitch Keller had a, the best season of his career last year. And arguably the most full season of his career. You can make the argument that last year was the first time that we really got to look at Mitch Keller as a starting pitcher for a complete season. At the age of 25. And for being here for so long. I mean, you're talking about a former second round pick. Who again was a, top, a highly touted prospect. He had an okay season in the, in the COVID season. But since 2019 when he debuted. I mean, he's had his ups and downs. But it finally appears that he's on the up. He's got better command on his fastball. His secondary pitches look better. And one of the things that I said last year about Mitch Keller that a lot of people agreed with me on that I kept as a consistent take for the entire season last year was that he just looked more composed. He didn't look so tense. He didn't look tight on the mound anymore. He actually looked like he was enjoying himself. He would get in high leverage situations and immediately get himself out of them. He would prevent runners in scoring position from scoring. He was doing things right last year that we've never really seen Mitch Keller do in that capacity and in that sample size. We've never really seen Mitch do these kind of things before. We just haven't. And it's really, really embracing for him to be the opening day starter. Now, obviously, if we're talking about who he's going to face on opening day, I would assume it's probably Hunter Green. And I think I give... Keller the, the up on whoever he's facing against Cincinnati on March 30th, and I expect him to have a phenomenal performance on March 30th. And I'm very excited for him, as everybody else should be. Now, before we get into the final part of today's episode, which will be some trends that I've noticed in spring training that I would like the Pirates to fix before opening day, we're going to take another short break.
Alrighty, everybody, and welcome back to the final segment of today's show here on Locked On Pirates, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every day. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Locked On Pirates or at MVP underscore Ethan for all of your news and coverage of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the minor leagues, and baseball as a whole. So, spring training, ultimately, at the end of the day, is not the be-all, end-all. Uh, biggest component to that, we saw Kevin Newman break the spring training batting title record last year. Now he's not even on the team, and he looked terrible last year, just, just to be frank about it. There's a lot of parts to spring training that just don't matter. The wins and losses, throw them out the window. Brian Reynolds and Andrew McCutcheon having slow springs. Throw it out the window. It's, but it is good to recognize good things and bad things about spring training. And I think you start on the bad end of things where this Pirates team, to start spring training, has just not been putting up runs. And the offense last year was just not very good. And I feel like it's concerning for Pirates fans to see. You look at today's game, for instance, 7-1 to one loss. You look at yesterday, 2-2 two to two tie. They had a good outing uh, yesterday in the split squad against Baltimore where they had six runs. But then you go past that again, 11-3 to three loss to the Braves. They only score three runs and a win against the Yankees. Four runs and a loss against the Phillies. Seven against the Tigers and a loss. They're just not really putting up runs. And it's concerning. It really is. I mean, you there's a lot of one-run, two-run, and three-run games again with this team. And again, I, I don't think that it's that big of an issue. I do think that it is something that is worthy of conversation that the offense looks pretty slow right now. But let's also remind ourselves that it's spring training. They've only been on the field since the 25th of February. Where, if you want to make any argument about the offense being overall as a whole stagnant for the most part this spring, first three games of spring, they scored seven runs. Actually, the first four games of spring, they scored seven runs. Now, albeit a couple of those games were losses, but after that, I mean, one run, two runs, one run, three runs, two run, or five runs, two runs, seven runs, four runs, seven runs. Seven appears to be the number and the cap for this team to, at the current moment. But hopefully the offense comes around by the time on opening day because I just don't think this team can afford to have another season where the offense is just not there. Partially because the Harleen Garcia injury hurts that bullpen more than people think. And the bullpen right now, there, there's a lot of moving parts. And do we really know who's going to be there? How does David Bednar come out this year after the injury that sidelined him near the back end of 2022? Who's your left-handed option outside of Jose Hernandez? who is your Rule 5 pick that you were probably looking to stash? Does Colin Selby eventually come up? I mean, there's a lot of questions that are surrounding this team right now with only a couple of weeks before opening day. I mean, we're only about two and a half weeks away, I think. Two weeks, I think, actually tomorrow. So there's a lot on the minds of Pirates fans, including myself. You're talking about the offense. You're talking about the bullpen. Talking about some of these young guys. Where does Travis Swaggerty fit into the mold? He's had a really good spring. And that's one thing I've noticed trend-wise. Kanan Smith and Jigba, pretty good spring so far. Travis Swaggerty, pretty solid spring. There's been a lot of these guys that are involved in these primary positional battles that have actually had pretty solid outings in the spring so far. And... Eventually, the Pirates are going to have to make decisions. And you saw that with Andy Rodriguez and that slew of guys that were sent down to the minor league camp. You saw that with the decisions that have been made in the acquisitions of some of these players in free agency. 
Pirates have a lot of moving parts. And there are still holes on this team. But there is the argument, though, obviously, that this team looks a lot better than it did in 2022. And yeah, the offense looks stagnant right now. Yeah, the bullpen's kind of struggling. The pitching's kind of off. But they still have two and a half weeks before opening day. And ultimately, we're not going to remember much from spring by the time the second week of the season starts. We're just not. And that's really all I have to say about it. There are certain trends that I see right now that I like, like Brian Reynolds hitting some homers, Key Brian Hayes hitting some homers. There are certain trends I don't like, like the offense overall just not being that great. But it'll work itself out the way it's supposed to, and the regular season's right around the corner. But ultimately, it won't matter in the grand scheme of things. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Locked On Pirates podcast today, sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more over at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. You guys are the best for always tuning into these shows. You're the best for leaving your comments, your likes, your subscriptions, your reviews, and all of your comments on Twitter as well are always phenomenal. Guys, thank you for tuning into the Locked On Pirates podcast today here on Wednesday, March 15th on tomorrow's show. We'll have Craig on the show this week. He, I don't know if he's still at spring training or not, but I know we got him last week. So he will be on the show this week tomorrow for Craig Toth Thursdays. And then on Friday, I'll be on with Paul Francis Sullivan over at Locked On MLB on St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to be talking about all the things about the Pittsburgh Pirates heading into the regular season, which again starts March 30th. So get your calendar set and ready to go because we're also going to be having some previews pretty soon. And the Locked On Reds folks will be on this podcast the week of opening day at some point to preview the opening day series so all of that and more will be following a phenomenal coverage year for this Pittsburgh Pirates team guys thank you so much have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday evening root on Pitt tomorrow as well we're going to be talking about that a little bit with Craig as well probably near the back end of the podcast but thank you guys so much have a great evening my name's Ethan Smith I'll see you on the flip side